Okay, so number 19 is really hard. If you saw my explanation to number 18, I talked a lot about just kind of stumbling your way to the answer and not worrying so much about how you're going to solve a problem when you start it. It's good to sometimes plan out what you're going to do, but also at the same time, people who plan too much can sometimes get in their own heads and they won't start a problem if they don't see how it's going to end. And we definitely need to just do something here because I, if I saw this problem for the first time, I would have no idea what to do. But I do have some tools at my disposal that can make my life a little bit easier. One important piece is we still have in the original story an equation. 2h plus d equals 25. You should write that out on your page right away. You're going to need it. They wouldn't have given it to you if you didn't need it. And people who try to just kind of think about it in their head, you're, you're doing yourself a disservice. Get things on the page. Start the, let, let the pen move. You'd be surprised how much you can kind of figure out as you start writing. So I also know that one of my tools is to plug points into equations. So if I have some points to plug into this equation, I'm going to be in really good shape. So I'm going to look at this question now and see where are some points that I could plug in. Well, total rise of 9 feet, that's weird. That's some other thing. That's not part of this equation. So that's not going to help me right now. I'm going to just ignore it. But it also says that the height is between 7 and 8 inches, and they're asking about the depth. So there are a number of ways to get to the answer here, but the easiest thing I would do is just kind of play with the height because 7 and 8 are kind of easy numbers. But if I look at the answer choices for the depth, I could kind of guess and check with these, but some of them are really messy and I just get a little nervous about them. So I'd rather deal with the simpler thing first. This is, this is just me being lazy, but lazy in a good way. So the height can be between 7 and 8 inches. Well, let's just see what that does. Let's put 7 in for h and see what happens. So if h is equal to 7, we have 2 times 7 plus d is equal to 25. Okay, 14 plus d is equal to 25. We can subtract 14, and we get that d is equal to 11. I don't know why that helps, but sure, d is equal to 11. Well, let's see what happens if we put h as 8, right? Let's, we tried 7, let's try 8, let's, let's see what we learn, okay? So that's 2 times 8 plus d is equal to 25. So that's 16 plus d is equal to 25. Subtract 16, we're just doing algebra here, and d is equal to 9. Okay, well I think I have learned something here. If I know that d can be at most 11 and at least 9, I've got kind of a range here, right? When the height was at its lowest, 7, I found that d could be at its highest, which is 11. And when h was at its highest, 8, we found the lowest value for d, 9. So basically anything outside of this range is wrong. And since my answer choices are values of d, anything that's greater than 11 or lower than 9 is wrong. So that gets rid of two choices right away. And look, that may not seem like a big deal, but if you can get rid of two choices pretty quickly, you've just doubled your odds of getting this very hard question right. So even if you have no idea what to do from here, you've just gotten down to a 50-50 shot. Take a guess. That's still really good because if you do that a bunch of times done on the SAT, you go from getting a fourth of those questions right to a half of them right. That adds real points. But let's see what else we can do here. Again, there are a couple of ways to do this. But I like dealing with plug points into equations because it's very robotic, it's very simple. And so what I would do here is I would say, okay, I put some values in for H. Now let's put some values in for D, right? Choice B and C, those are possible values of D. What if I were to put those in? Now these are messy numbers, but I can still use the same equation. 2H plus, in this case, 9.5 is equal to 25. This is a good example where it's okay to use your calculator, right? So I would get my calculator, 25 minus 9.5, 2h is equal to 15.5, divide by 2, and I get h is equal to 7.75. So again, I don't, I don't really know what that means, 
but I now have like a point that kind of goes with that point. Okay, well, let's do it for C too, right? Might as well. 2H plus 10.6 equals 25. Again, use the calculator and we get 2H equals 14.4, then divide by 2, and we get that H is equal to 7.2. Okay. Those both fit the range of the, the H's that we had before. That makes sense, though. We, we should uh, have gotten the same answer there. Now you might be a little stuck. But one thing you can do is you can always say the SAT is not going to give me information that I don't use. It's a very rare. So you can go through this question again and be like, what didn't I use? It probably matters. So we ignored this piece here about the total rise of 9 feet. That's right here, total rise of 9 feet. We also ignored another piece of information, which is that there must be, I kind of blocked it out there, an odd number of steps. Well, let's look at what the total rise is in the diagram. It's all of the heights added together. Now, those heights were in inches. So here's a good example again. We're like, do the simplest thing, and let's convert 9 feet into inches. So 9 feet times 12 inches per foot. Again, use your calculator here. 9 times 12 is 108. So that's 108 inches. So I have 108 inches of total rise and a bunch of steps in there. And each step either has a height of 7.75, choice B, or 7.2, choice C. So what I would do right now is I would take my 108, my total rise, and divide it by the height of one step as calculated for each choice. How many steps does that give us? Well, again, use your calculator. 108 divided by 7.75 is a weird number, 13.94. Let's see what happens if we do that for choice C. 108 divided by 7.2. That's an even number, 15. Well. That's better because it's, an, it's a number of steps. You can't have decimal numbers of steps. That doesn't make a lot of sense in the context of the story. Plus, like I said, they told us we need an odd number of steps. 15 is an odd number. So C is going to be the answer because it brings everything together. If you're still confused by this question, that is okay. This is a confusing question. The main takeaway for you, if you're still confused, is that you can usually do one easy thing, even on hard questions. And that can eliminate some choices. It might not get you the right answer, but getting down to a 50-50 shot is something that can help you. It's, it doesn't feel great, but you should know that playing the odds on the SAT can still get you points. So 50-50 shot, guess and move on. There are probably other questions later in this section that you do know how to answer, and so don't waste your time on this long, complicated thing if you're still confused. This is definitely a question that could slow people down and cost them points later in the section because they just ran out of time. So be a good judge of yourself, but ultimately we are using a very common SAT strategy, plug points into equations, to get this one right. So when in doubt, if you got equations, if you could find some points, Plug them in, see what happens.